Well, good day, everybody. Steve from Mud Ducks Touring Australia. Today, I want to tell you about a product that has been sent to me. Full disclosure, this product has been sent to me for free to review. And I've taken it because when I get the Ram back from Brisbane, I want a dash cam. So they offered me a dash cam, so why not? I can only try it, see if it's any good. Now, the dash cam I've been given is the Vantru Nexus 4, or N4 for short. So I'm going to unbox it, show you what's in the kit, then put it in the car and show you some footage of what it's like. Now, it's going to be messy and in the Ranger until such time as I get the Ram back. So let's go and check it out and uh, see what we think. All right, well, I've come over to the tailgate and uh, we'll open this up and have a look at it, shall we? So as you can see, I haven't opened this one at all. And of course, when I want to use my flashy knife to cut it open, it decides to be difficult. But anyhow, we're getting the idea of it. So you can see it's boxed up pretty nicely. I'm going to peel this off. Tear and exclusive offering. Okay, whatever. Anyhow, it's all nicely boxed. That shows you some stuff about which way to orientate it and that kind of thing. So let's have a look at what's in here. So as you know, I don't normally do unboxings, guys, but uh, I want to show you exactly what it's like straight out of the box. So there she is like that. So uh, got the main camera there. It's got another camera that points back at you. I'll put that down gently. So I'll be installing this into the Ranger, as I said in the intro. Excuse my mess trying to just undo this. Bloody, geez, I know how to wrap these things, guys, I tell you. So that's good. This, I'm assuming, yeah, that's the rear camera. So that'll be um, the one we put at the back. What else is in here? Looks like just all the cables and stuff. So we'll get out the big box. It's well, it's well presented and wrapped up, guys. So that is a USB-C to USB cable, USB-C cable that goes, looks like it's the one that goes all the way to the, from the front camera to the rear camera. This is a USB-A to USB-C cable. So I'm not 100% sure what all that's about, but we'll find out as we go. And you've got more bits and pieces. It looks like a mount. So it's all very well wrapped up, guys. So that's something. I'm hoping this camera is quite good, because as I said, this one is destined to be in the RAM. Which is why, when they offered it to me, I thought, well, why not? I want a camera in the RAM. So, you know, these guys are offering it to me, so why not? See, so that's definitely just a mount for the camera. I don't know if it's the windscreen or the rear. I think it's the windscreen mount, actually. So there's that. Lots of gear in these guys. So... What have we got in this one? Stuff everywhere. It's a good job you only unbox these things once because I'm pretty well destroying all the packaging. So it's never going to look as cool again, eh? <laughs> but anyway, that's what happens. So, well, that's your cigarette lighter plug to power the uh, camera. It's got a good long lead on it by the look of it. So that goes to there and then you've got a USB-A on the back of that if you want to use anything off that. So that's those. There's a trim panel tool remover. So that's probably a handy thing, I'm thinking. So yeah, we've got instructions. We've got cleaning stuff. Looks like we've got some stickers and things in there. So pads and tabs and things. So that's uh, all of that. Now I'll give you some video of me putting it in the car when I fit it up 
and uh, show you what that looks like. But um, it looks like it should be a good thing. I'm really interested in how this goes as a, uh, a forward facing camera, but the, the interior camera on the back there, all the information, that's the display screen. I'm not gonna pull that off until such time as I'm ready to use it because I wanna scuff it up. So there's all that. So I'll get that mounted in the car and give you a look at how it all goes. I'll use it over a period of days to weeks and then um, I'll tell you what I, what I think of it. But at the moment, this is just unboxing and a look at uh, the, uh, the camera itself. So it's the very true Nexus or N4. So we will test it out and let you know what I think of it. See you in a while, guys. Well, stupidly enough, I forgot to actually video me fitting it in the car, but uh, if it's in, it's stuck up nicely, and you'll see some other shots from other angles later, but just at the moment, we'll show you what the video footage from the cameras is like, and um, see what you think. Adelaide Street. These next little bits, guys, I've deleted the sound out of the actual original clip. Purely and simply because Karen and I were driving along just talking about general stuff and you didn't need to hear that. So I'll just give you a few more seconds of images and then we'll move on with a little bit more. This is a little bit further down the track on our way to Sydney that particular night, guys. So it gives you a good look at what the footage is like out of the front camera. Uh, I think it's pretty impressive. Uh, we'll move on to some night footage on the way home. And once again, I just gave up on having any audio from Karen and I just having a general chat. I hope you can understand that, guys. Well, this is what the front camera looks like of a night. Now, it's not raining or anything, obviously, but uh, I think that's really good vision. The reflection of my GPS is just from poor camera placement, but uh, I think that looks really good. It shows up everything pretty well. We'll show you some shots of the infrared looking inside now. Now, as you'd expect, the night vision's not that fantastic, although I think it's pretty clear there. At, um, Geez, people don't look real good in the uh, infrared, do they? But anyhow, it gives you a pretty good idea. It certainly show you all the information that you would ever require if you were in any kind of accident and stuff. So um, I reckon it comes up pretty good. That's well-lit street areas. I think I've got vision of us looking worse than that later on. Don't know how well you can see that. That's your two screens on the... Uh, been true they're quite clear good I'll, you'll see some footage and would have seen some footage and overlay of um, how it is I'm not using the rear camera on the van true in this particular setup I'll do that when I set it up full-time in the uh, the ram but I've got no reason to think it would be any worse than the uh, the other cameras so it's going pretty well so far and the footage that I'm filming at the moment through it we're in the Barrington Tops looking for some snow and we found some so just in the first car park we're gonna to have to do a U in find somewhere to park because it's very busy so anyway we'll show you more as we go along well continuing on with um, this van true it has an app, uh, which I um, will try to show you a bit of. And so I don't know how easy it'll be to record this in the car. I'm going to do the screen recording as well. But um, you can see 
that uh, it turns the the camera off and you've got a gazillion settings here now i have found uh, sadly but so far in my experience that um that realistically that's a, they've got all these controls that realistically the g sensor is um is just basically in this four-wheel drive too bloody sensitive so i've had a lot a lot of um event recordings happening on their own so i've just turned it off and i'm going to see how that plays out but on the uh, the screen which hopefully you're seeing in the recording here as well it's got a heap of adjustments it's got sync to phone time which i've got on it's got your resolution settings your loops which is uh like three minutes one minute five minutes i've got it set on three just seems like a good thing like I said, I've turned the G sensor off. You've got LEDs, infrared LEDs on autos. I've just left them like that. Uh, heaps and heaps of adjustment for this camera. Voice control. So that's all very good. So uh, we'll get out of that and we'll go back to the preview mode. Now, obviously, preview mode at the present is looking at me. And it's looking at my garage door because I'm not moving. So... Um, that is about all I can tell you about that part so far. Now, as I've mentioned earlier in the clip, I'm not running the rear camera in this because it's not going to be permanently in this car. But I have no reason to think that the, uh, the vision from the rear camera isn't going to be every bit as good as the vision from the interior camera. Uh, if I push that, that makes it a bigger screen that way. So that's kind of cool. Uh, and then I... Uh, I can take it back to the other way, I think. Yeah, there we go. So far, I've found it to be a great camera. And um, I'm enjoying it, other than the it events way too much for my liking. So I'll go out of the live preview. I'll stop the screen recording. And um, I'll put you back to me. So I'm going to go and do some other stuff in the car now, but uh, I just wanted to show you that bit. I'm getting pretty close to the end of uh, talking about this camera, I think. Um, so what are my uh, my feelings on it? I've been running it now for several days. I haven't run it for that long, but I've had it for a few days. Managed to go for a drive to Sydney and a drive up the Barrington Tops in the time since I've had it in the car, and it's been great. And even when I look at the files uh, from the camera facing me, uh, it's looking at the back windscreen a bit. It's almost good enough to not need the rear camera anyway. And as I said, because I want to put this one in the RAM rather than leave it in here, uh, I didn't want to go to the effort of running the reverse uh, the rear camera. I hope you understand that, guys. But um, look, to be honest, I'm liking it. The Vantru Nexus 4 um, Pro, it's uh, it's been pretty good so far. Anyway, I'll um, do a, a full wrap-up segment shortly, which will be in a few seconds for you. It might be in a few hours or maybe even a couple of days for me. But anyway, I've got some other stuff I've got to get done, so I'll catch up in a little while, guys. Well, just doing a little drive around at the moment. As you saw earlier, I've turned all the G-sensors off and I haven't had any camera events record on their own, so uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I just don't like the fact that it was that sensitive that it was recording events a lot. Even when I had the sensitivity set down on minimum, I'd have to go left or right a little bit hard and then record that. And, and uh, you know, forward and backward, strange enough, and to record that, and I turned the up and down off fairly quickly because, um, yeah, it was recording a lot. You know, you only have to hit a pothole and it would record that. So, so far, the G sensor off seems to be working well. Now, I don't know whether that will 
do anything if I was to hit the brakes really quickly or not, or because it's off, it's off. Uh, well, um, I've had an impact, whether it would do anything. So that could be a problem. I mean, if I had an impact with another vehicle, I can click the lock button, and that's okay. But if I had a major one, I might not be in a condition to click the lock button. So I don't know exactly the best way to go about that. But um, I'm guessing maybe for uh, for touring style trips or general use, I might put it back to minimum. But realistically, it was sensing something and recording an event so often, and uh, it uh, was very difficult in this car. Now this car being a Ranger with a fairly hard suspension up until it's loaded and or off-road uh, it might have been part of it, I don't know, but um, it just seemed overly sensitive to me. But that said, I'm loving the camera. It's um, got great resolution as you would have seen from some of the footage. Mike is a bit average, but mics on uh, dash cams usually are. Now, with all that in mind, I might wrap the video up anyway. I'll uh, put anything conclusive in before I do the uh, the outro, so uh, I'll do that. So I'll either see you in a second with an ending. Or I'll see you in a second with some more footage. Okay, well that's the Vantrue Nexus 4 Pro or N4 Pro. I think it's a good camera. And I'm, as I said, without testing the rear camera, my assumptions are that the rear camera will be every bit as good as the camera facing the uh, interior inhabitants. So, I've no reason to think it'd be worse than that. Certainly it's got a great clear vision out the front. The interior night vision isn't great, but it will save the details required, so that's really all you need. So I think it's a good unit. So I'd like to thank Van True for sending me the unit. And um, I'll leave links in the description below where you can get them. But I hope you enjoyed the clip. I know it's a little bit different to uh, what I usually do. And as I said at the start of the video, they did send me this this camera for free. So I, uh, I didn't pay for it. I'll let you know up front. But uh, I only selected it because I actually wanted to buy a dash cam for the RAM when I get the RAM back. So uh, this came up, so I thought, why not? pretty sure most of you would do the same thing if you had that opportunity. As I said, links below. I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. So, all the best. Uh, cheers from Steve and Kaz at Mud Ducks Touring Australia. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel, you can uh, go to the website, buy some merch, or you can consider joining uh, at the link bill, at the clicking the button below. Learn to speak, Stephen. And uh, for a couple of dollars, you can uh, you can help support the channel, but you don't have to. The clips will be up every weekend anyway. All the best, guys. Cheers for Stephen Kays at Mud Ducks Touring Australia. We'll see you on the next one. That's just where I happen to have it mounted in here, but I'll probably mount it slightly differently in the rear.